All right, everyone. I think I'm back. Emma, Kelly. Yes, you are. There we go. I think I'm back. Okay, here we go. Cool. Wonderful. And again, if you weren't able to see that, my apologies. I will work with Nellie to try and make sure that I have a Vimeo option. I do have this video on many of my websites. So in the event that you would to be able to see this on your own, any of the ones that you just Google me and you can see me on Technology the Tutors, um, Expert Tech Solutions, Thinking Beyond Limits, etc. There's a, quite a variety of places that I have this video, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. But my purpose is this. Think of how engaging that video was. Think of how wonderful that technology can be that my students love that matter of fact I remember the first time that I met Nellie when we were doing this and she's dancing along to some of my videos think about how fun it is it's only two and a half minutes the um, animator platform is very easy to use very user-friendly again you can make free ones for 30 seconds I happen to pay three dollars a year to be able to use their mid-range service but here's another one and I'm not going to try this now in there because I know we're a little short on time this morning but there's a, a video that's specific for this particular book that I have and it's an ebook and the reason I made it an ebook is it's very inexpensive. I didn't want to make technology and the cost of being able to have some of this available to be a, a, a reason why people couldn't um, understand what it is that I'm doing. I also have a class that if you go to te Technology the Tutors video, uh, technologythetutors.com, there is a three-week class that goes over some of these details in detail. It's a self-paced self class so that you too can look at some of these things and be able to do, to do this for your students very, ineffect very effectively and very inexpensively. But I have to start with a disclaimer. I want to make sure that you understand that a blog is not in lieu of classroom activities, but it's only to enhance the student experience. We don't want to take our students out of our classrooms for very long because we want to be able to make sure that we can particularly keep our universities happy to make sure that we have the assessment and we can maintain to maintain control we, we must make sure we follow policies to monitor classrooms and document faculty student engagement we will have to monitor the blogs to ensure positive activities are in use for are in line with university policies so be sure to check with your university leadership some schools are now understanding some of the andragogical techniques that i use with of these strategies, but it takes a little while with, stra with strategies and with change to make sure that people understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. So let me talk briefly about exactly what a blog is. Essentially, a blog is just short for a web blog. They combine the words, and it's really just a personal online journal. It's frequently updated. I typically update my blogs. I have several of them, usually on Fridays, and it's intended for general public consumption. They're usually just defined by their format. You'll have um, educational blogs. There's one that I love called the Grammar Gal. Oh, she's fantastic. No grammar tips, you know, the difference between there, there, and there, and further, and farther, and things like that. But these are wonderful uh, opportunities to connect with the authors. Instead of just seeing me on a page, you know, seeing like the PowerPoint slides, and unfortunately the video isn't working today, but typically you'd be able to see me in person and have that ability to have that personal touch so you can have exchanges with the author and it's just not a talking head or just a book that you purchased. So it's really the personality of the author and it reflects the purpose of the website that hosts the blog. For example, I have my blog called dissertationpublishing.com and you're going to see pictures of it as we go along. But it really is to help my students become better writers. I notice that there is a lot of things that we as educators, whether associate, undergrad, graduate, doctoral level, we expect a lot from our students and we want to teach the content of our courses. Here, there's an awful lot of writing tips, which is how I design this technology that tutors so that they have the ability, they being the students, have the ability to look at a lot of the things that I'm doing and really self-serve themselves with some of the resources. The author of a blog is referred to as a blogger, and many blogs syndicate their contents of subscribers. What that means is you could go to Amazon.com and type in your favorite blogs and actually download them on your iPad or on your email just to, like if you, you would have a magazine delivered to your home. Your home. It's simply a way to be able to subscribe so you get regular updates. If you wanted to go to my blog, you can use an RSS feed and simply go ahead and every time I made a new post, you would be uh, emailed or through your iPad, something along those lines.
Although not a must, you have to make sure that a lot of quality blogs are interactive. For example, when you see some of the posts that I do every week, it has the ability that you could leave comments, you being the visitor to my website. And that's the technique we want to be careful of. While I connect with my students and I have thousands of people that are connected with me on Facebook and LinkedIn and, and from my blogs, I want to make sure that as an educator, I tell my students not to interact with me. That is a substitute for their schooling. It's merely an enhancement over and above what we do in the classroom. It's, it's this interactivity that distinguishes what a blog is from what a website might be. So this is one of my blogs, The Consumer Learner. It's a blog based on a book that I co-authored with Dr. Julian Silver. We did win two awards for this book as well. But this, if you look at the header, that is the top of the screen that will just tell you what it is. If you look at the welcome message that's on there, and you'll see lower in there, it's a sign up. You could actually go on there, log in, and then when I blog, you would actually have a subscription. And then you'll see the blog that's listed there. That blog is a little bit longer. Typically, the conventional wisdom now is that blogs should be a whole lot shorter than this. What you have to say, but think of the fact that sometimes I will use blogs as mini lectures for my students. And it, now that I'm creating an external library, as I have things that come up, all I need to do is keep them in the library, post the link in my class, and ta-da, I have now cloned myself many times. So here's another example of a blog, again, from my refractive thinker. But look at the, notice that what's below. As you see the reply feature, the blog is at the top. That's just my voice of being able to tell people what I think, with research or not, it kind of depends. And then they have the ability to give me their thoughts. And I'll tell you our next sequel to the consumer learner, we're already working on it, is a result of that interaction we have with many of our people across the world that have come to be able to share their thoughts, particularly about education. The focus of the consumer learner is the ability is that there are many people who are believing that education is much more of a transactional exchange instead of a transformational exchange, where many universities, I've actually heard them say this, we think professors are customer service agents. I thought I was a professor. Some university thinks that we are here to please our students. I'm here to be able to serve our students. Ah, thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. Yes, that blog role is simply a link, uh, a listing of other blogs that you would like to offer or links either to other blogs or websites. So it's just a, consider it as a, a directory of links that you can offer to enhance other things because many people who come to my site are looking for additional educational things. So I will offer those links as as a service to them. So thank you, Jen Jennifer. That's great. OK, so let's continue here. Here is the a reflection of a specific topic. I often use a theme, something that has come up in my classes. I teach for a variety of universities. And I tend to see, as many of you will see in your classrooms, they've had a trouble with passive voice. They've had a trouble with synthesis. I mean, Every time I have that opportunity to connect with my students, I will be able to offer this personal diary, this personal connection, and then I can post a link in my class. Now, I do have to caution you is that some universities struggle with the advertising part of this. There are a lot of things that are on my blog. All of the books that I have uh, published, all of the e-books and the audio books, and there is a simple advertising, because that's part of what a blog is, is think of it as your, your online diary, but it's, it has a lot of advertising to it on some levels. And we just have to be sure that we're in line so that we're not self-serving in terms of self-promotion. I'm not here to sell for my students, but I'm here as an entity that combines text, images, web pages, videos, etc., that are all related to my topic. I also think of this as fish where the fish are. I actually learned it at, at a conference I went to. I was at IBAM in San Diego two weekends ago. And I was amazed that some faculty are actually offering discussions in Facebook and Twitter. And I can't wait to try this, quite frankly. The reason they're doing this is fish where the fish are. We know that many of our students are on YouTube. They are on Facebook. They are on LinkedIn and Pinterest and Instagram and all these other things. And they're actually spending much more time there than in our classroom. So the challenge becomes is how can we get their attention to be able to engage with them? In the event that, again, you are not offering video connections in your classes, you're not offering something that jazzes it up more than simply text, there's going to be a struggle with many of your uh, 
students who are requesting that, who want to be, it's particularly online, that cutting edge technology. So we want to be able to give them options, but to use it as this ability to connect with your reader. And that's why blogs are really cool. You have that interactive option. But again, don't take them off your site. Use it so that they can have the ability to connect with you in the classroom. And now let me show you a little bit of how this is possible. This is what's going to excite your university, the Boyer model of scholarship. Part of what these strategies do is actually offer these four different types of scholarship. Scholarship of discovery, scholarship of integration, scholarship of application, and scholarship of teaching. The last two in particular happen to be the focus of what we're doing is we're trying to be able to increase the ability to get our message to our students so they get excited about it. We want to be able to make sure that if we're going to be able to teach them, you know, that it, we can't teach them if they're not going to stay around in their classes. We're not going to be able to teach them if they're not going to be able to offer that ability to connect with us and trust us. So I make my classes fun. I use a, you'll hear my Siberian Husky in the background, I apologize. Um, great, Racy wants to participate too. But anyway, we're looking at the ability to have techniques and technologies that are going to tutor your students, liven up your classrooms, absolutely be in line with university policies and expectations so that we can tie this all together in double and triple lip Triple loop learning. can never say that very well. So where do we begin? I want to be able to give you some very quick techniques because setting up a blog is not very expensive and it's not something that's going to require a, an awful lot of skill in there. It just takes a little bit of a learning curve. Since January of 2011, I only do things one step at a time. Now, several years later, I have more than 76 videos. I have more than 200 blog posts, but I started with the very first one. So the very first thing the step that you have to do is you have to purchase a domain name. Shh, uh, you need to be able to go to some, some place like GoDaddy.com or Arvix.com or HostGator. And these domain names can anywhere be from $7.99 to $12.99 per year. These domain names would be www.consumerlearner.com. That's the one that I showed you. Um, www.refractivethinker.com, uh, effectivestudieskills.com. Any one of those, I have about 14 of them. And usually I have one for each book that I've published. So first you go in there, and this is one of the ways to do it. You just go to GoDaddy, you find out if it's available, you go ahead and you purchase it, and you have the ability to own it. Now once you own it, you have to find a place to host it. So here are some of the blogs that I have, as I mentioned. Here's my uh, publishing tips and writing tips for my students called dissertationpublishing.com. Here's the Consumer Learner blog, again, www.consumerlearner.com. Here's the, um, another one, technology that tutors.com for this ebook and this uh, particular uh, presentation. Uh, you can go there and see all of this information there. So now that you have the, this is my address, now we have to have a company that's going to host it. Now it's not, again, not very expensive. It's about $4 per month. So you're talking, you can have your own blog and your own hosting for maybe, maybe less than $40 a year. So this is not something that's very expensive. I don't know if your universities might pay for this. I do know that there are some companies that will offer uh, educators. But just be careful. For example, if you go to wordpress.com, there is no commercial um, aspect at all. So if there's anything on your site that would you know, ever highlight something you've published, a journal article, something that you do on the side, WordPress will automatically kick you off the site and you'll be banned for life. So do be very careful about some of this stuff in there. You also have to decide what type of blog that you will have. I like the ability to have WordPress. I've been spending a lot of time with it. It's one of the most popular. So when I went and owned my www.technologythetutors.com, I went to HostGator. I went to have the ability to put WordPress on it, and it was all free. And the hosting companies provided step-by-step -step instructions. Just be careful of using free blogs. I, I applaud. Um, some of the options and you just have to be careful because free is you get what you pay for. Uh, sometimes it's not hosted. Sometimes you don't own that information if it's a free blog. And if any of your information is proprietary, copyright, you want to really be specific so that you can have and own your content and be able to control it. And I have always found that it's easier to spend a few, you know, a few dollars a year and it's tax deductible as part of your educational expenses that you want to be able to have this ability and control it because it's very, very simple. I've spent years with trying to find um, expensive web designers. And it was so much easier when I learned to do it myself. And now I can just upload things. It, it is a little bit of a learning curve. And again, I have a class to teach you with this. But it's something that will offer some additional help for you and be able to keep it within your control and within your ability for your students. 
Now again, here's the website that says WordPress.com. That is a free website, but again, it cannot have anything that's commercial on it. And again, my blog has all of our books on it. There are links to Amazon.com, things of that nature. And while I don't highlight them, because that's again, it's my university policy, they are there because your students, they need to see that legitimacy. They need to see that you are a best-selling author or a, an, an accomplished first author and that you have things that are out there because they're going to school to get an education to actually follow potentially in your footsteps to show that you are doing what I mentioned. Remember that practitioner faculty. The ability to not just be an educator that teaches, but to be an educator who actually owns their own business, has real world experience from consulting to nonprofit to even your personal lives. This is what students want to do. They need to know what's possible. And that inspiration can give them. So yes, I want to let you know that free blogs are out there. You just got to be careful so you understand. And I never did anything unless I understood it because some of these free sites, again, you get that what you pay for, and if you have things that are proprietary, it could disappear one day. And it may be something that other people would put on their sites, and if you want to maintain copyright and control, again, just some things to think about. So now let's go to the fun part. This is the cool thing is the art of the blog is a teaching tool. I'll tell you, I have so much more fun in my classes now. My students, the best comment that I get is, Doc C, you're the voice behind the curtain. You're someone who's real. And to me, that is the most exciting part of being able to have that ability to use technology in the classroom to connect with your students. So think of a blog as having your own teaching assi assistant 24-7. My blog in January of 2011 started out of frustration, quite frankly, for seemingly answering the same question over and over and over again for my students. And I'm sure many of you have done this as well. It's the, how do you get them to read your syllabus? How do you get them to read the assignment directions? How do you get them, heaven forbid, to use APA format and to avoid passive and all these other things that it just seemed that, you know, as I increased with how many years of teaching, it was just seeing the same patterns emerge over and over. So as of October 1st, I have more than 75, 000, or 75 videos, and now more than, actually it's up to, I think, 26,800 or so downloads and counting. And what that means is the fact that I post links in my classroom, and these are my students who are actually going. For example, this week, we had some PowerPoint presentations. And as I'm sure you know, that students will try, particularly online, to put as much information on that slide as possible. So I post my own videos of step-by-step -step instructions, about a two and a half minute video of how to do effective PowerPoint presentations. I'll also post other videos. I love the favorite one, Death by PowerPoint by um, Don McClellan. Oh my gosh, he's hysterically funny. And that type of humor helps students because they will click a video. They might not read your syllabus. So the blog offered the ability to clone myself as often as a student might need at their convenience in their time zone as often as they like when they need the information. So as much as we struggled with having issues with Vimeo and YouTube, YouTube is actually bypassing uh, many of the search engines as a high content area where students spend a lot of time. So again, fish where the fish are. Your videos do not have to be professional. Do not let that intimidate you. Some of mine, I guarantee you, I'm not going to be winning any Academy Awards. And the more mistakes I make, believe it or not, the students think that it makes me feel human. That they can go ahead. I mean, I can do videos now on my new cell phone that I got about three months ago instead of using some of the high technology that I have on my computers. So it's very, very simple. But all of these things just take one step at a time. And you will be amazed that years from now that you will have a lot of things to be able to connect with your students. And the good thing, you do it once, and it will be a steep learning curve the first time. But now I have a library that all I have to do is put links in my thing. I'm setting up a new class that starts actually in a week and a half. And my setting up a class takes me no more than 15 minutes. Why? I have videos. I have um, pictures. I have things that go zip, 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 as opposed to what it used to do is take me hours. Why? It's efficiency. So here are the ways that, and this is again an andragogy technique. I, um, pedagogy is teaching children, andragogy is teaching adults. But we have three types of learners that we have. And the learners that we have, you know, are visual learners, auditory learners, and kinesthetic learners, those who learn by doing. So I can post a text link to the blog post that you saw in the earlier picture 
a video that actually has a transcript. And this was fantastic because I was using uh, this video with a blind student that I had. So your videos don't even have to worry about any of the um, ADA, uh, American Disability Acts types of techniques, because there is so much technology that is being ADA compliant that now anyone can go to school for any reason. And there's a lot of integrated technology that will tutor them re depending on what their disability may be. And then we have pictures and graphics. So let me show you some examples. This is the text. And this is the actual on the blog. So if you typed in www.dissertationpublishing.com, this is one of the, um, actually this is probably consumerlearner, yeah, but consumerlearner.com, this is one of the posts. And if you see underneath the title on this page, and I wish I had a pointer here, let me see if I can try and do this here, that see the Facebook button and the tweet button? These are the abilities that I can actually share these in my social media. So not only am I able to teach my students, but I can teach my graduates who connect with me after the fact. So there are many, and it's called a share function. It's not easy. It's not difficult to be able to put on the particular blog. But now I can share it. So again, I love the ability to have one effort, one writing the text. And a lot of these are often lectures that I use. And again, all I have to do is copy the link that's on the, the page and post it. And that's the text portion. Here's what I do for the video portion. Also on that website is for those who are not fans of YouTube, I take the YouTube video and I embed it. And again, that's not very complicated. Being able to take the code, YouTube makes it very, very easy to be able to copy the code and be able to see it. And for those of you who may struggle with going to YouTube, sometimes it works different on a different platform. That all you have to do is, again, click this button here. And this is the actual video that's on YouTube. I just embedded it actually on the blog. And part of the reason I did that is because both video and the blog can be shared. And now you have, again, do something once and have many different ways around the mulberry bush. Here's another idea that I have. And this is really cool. This is, if you see this in the, in the corner here, you go to my website, you got to go check this out. Because I can't make it work here. And sometimes when websites are updated, um, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, you know, they all work a little bit differently. So sometimes these things don't always play in my classroom. And the one thing you have to be careful of is you don't want to frustrate your students. So I will put it on an external blog and they will have the ability to play with it. But if you click on this, this is called an avatar or a Voki and it's V-O-K-I and you can just go to Voki.com. You can press a button and that is a talking voice with a British accent that will say, hi, this is Dr. C. Welcome to class. And it's fantastic. And it's just this little free little technique that you can you know, even create your lectures that way if you want to. Again, little ideas how to be able to have this available. Oh, there's Jen. Um, my blog is available free to anybody um, that's available. Um, the course, if you wanted to take it and you actually went to um, technology the tutors at that dot com the core the three-week courses on this but no my blog YouTube video all of this stuff is free and that's the benefit of being able to have this for students and that is it is all free for them and many of the students once they find out that I have many of these things they're like where have you been all my life doxy you know so let me tell you about how the kind of the process that I use because this is kind of interesting in fact this book here in the corner effective study skills it, this came as a request of my students, quite frankly, because this effective study skills has 10 chapters or vignettes. They're only two pages long, and they have a corresponding video with them. And they are free. If you go to my blog and you can find them all, or you go to YouTube and find the videos, it's all there. But my students wanted to have it all in one particular place, so I just created an ebook and copied all of my blog posts. So now you can go to, I think it's like $4.99 or something like that. And if they want to, if you want the free version, it's on my blog. If you want to have the ability to just have it all in one place, you can you know, go and it's just an ebook. You can get it on your Kindle. You can get the PDF file. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can do this. But that was at the request of my students. So again, my point was not to make money because it cost me quite a bit to put the cover and all this stuff together. I don't make money on these books necessarily. But it is a way to be able to give them a, OK, they'll have it in one spot. And now there's 10 different chapters. And one of them is how to create a writing system, how to create a research system, how to read an academic textbook, how to format your papers in APA format. Um, how to avoid writing in um, passive voice. So there's, again, 10 different chapters, and they're all free. So I think of it as a mini lecture, because research suggests that students learn more effectively in short bursts, meaning that instead of the long sessions that we might have been guilty of in college that you're, you're cramming the night before, 
two minutes, three minutes, 20 minutes at a time. I can do more to teach them, say, two, you know, exactly like this book, five simple steps. Every one of my technique systems has five different, one, two, three, four, five. That's it. And it's a compilation of these things that I post on my blog, and now it's an e email or an ebook for my students so they can all do it in one place. But again, the goal is, is how can I get my students to do what I want them to do to be stronger writers, to be understanding some of the things, and I'm using uh, an andragogy strategy in the classroom, just using technology, the tutors, to do it. So here, let's keep going here. Um, here is what the back end, meaning when you are going to be posting a blog press, this is what WordPress actually looks like. So you actually just log in with your username and your password. This is what's called a dashboard. And if you'll see here, that here's the title, here's the comments, here are tags. And there's a variety of things. Again, I don't, my goal is not to discourage you with the minutia because it took me a while. I, I will not lie that it, it was a bit of a learning curve initially. And again, this was several years ago. This did not happen overnight. But the good news is, is once I did it once, I now have all these links. And technology is so much simpler now than it was when I even started back in January of 2011. So a lot of this stuff is, and here's the good part. I am willing to share all of this with you. It is all free. If you'd like to go on my blog, there's a wonderful search function. If you'd like to go on YouTube, there's a wonderful search function. Go and subscribe to my channels and post the videos in your own classrooms for your students. I am happy to share that with my colleagues across the world so that you can have the ability to first start with me. And again, feel free to giggle. I'm not perfect. Some of my stuff my students find very entertaining. But it gives you the ability to learn what I'm doing and to start on this path. But this is all that you can, um, that will take to add a new post in a blog. Is you here, is you add the new post here. You click a title. You put your text. You hit publish. Guys, that's it. I know it's a bit daunting, but that's all you have to do. And then you see the beautiful things that, that comes out on the other end. And it will look just like this. And you'll just have it. So here we have is I will post my links. I will post here's again a, on the dissertation website that you can sign up for publishing tips each week. You can see my links to webinars. You can see some of this has been updated recently using WordPress websites as well as blogs. But here's the cool thing. The only thing that I've done is integrate one doing something once, and now I have four or five different ways of doing this. So think of yourself as that you're in the classroom and you're just creating a mini lecture, all right? Two to five minutes of something, you know, some little pause that you did in resonance or even online, um, a, a little workshop or, or a little activity. So here's what I do first is I create the YouTube video. Typically, I script the video out. And you'll notice in, in some of my um, first videos, it's, you will see me actually reading. And I've learned a little bit. So if you go back to the way beginning, please be kind because I had to learn too. But I would script it. Now I do a whole lot less scripting. But then I would go and have that script. And I have done the video. So I create the video. And now I have the script. So now I have, remember, our three different learners. I have the text only, either in a blog or a transcript to the video or the video as the video on YouTube or embedded in my blog. So there's a variety of options to, again, connect with your students. And quite frankly, I even post some of this stuff on Facebook. And I will post it on LinkedIn. And I will post it on Twitter for the world to see why. My goal is not just to teach the students the classroom. My goal is to have the ability to broaden and show what other what's possible so that you as the faculty can Focus more on teaching your content and less teaching writing skills, which we assume that many things will have. So here are the options that you have. Is we will have the ability to do a print screen. You'll have the mini lecture as a blog. You'll have the uh, mini lecture as a, as a video YouTube. And remember that ebook that I told you about, as I had both the transcript and the video in one chapter of the ebook in there. It's just all in one place. And now you have many options. You do the work once to fulfill the three different types of learners you have in your classroom. So again, just to review, this is the video blog post. So this is the video on YouTube embedded in the blog. So again, if your students only like the blog, this is catering to them. And this is the video that I do first. But it's just YouTube. And this is the video right here, if I can try and do this. And the blog is the bigger picture here. And it's just a, and, it, and again, YouTube makes this very easy that there's a function that under the share button, you click embed video. They already do the coding. All you have to do is copy and paste it, and voila, you look like a hero. Here's the text post. Again, this is you from that dashboard writing your text of your mini lecture. Again, you have, short is best. You don't want long things. And again, if you go back to um, and check out my blog, dissertationpublishing.com, you'll see the ones early there were very long lectures. 
not a good thing, but I've left them there because I still use some of them. But you want to be able to short and sweet, again, two to three minutes. Think of those short bursts of energy. I tell my students to do a focused learning, meaning try and focus on three things per week. Think of a, a five-week class. That's 15 new things that they are going to actually remember. And wouldn't that be thrilling that they actually remembered something we taught them to use for the next class? Here's the actual video on YouTube itself. So you'll see the YouTube logo that's here. And you can post them anywhere. The same, I understand Vimeo is very popular. Um, there are ways that you can have things on Amazon.com to post videos. There are a variety of platforms. My goal is not to what the platform is, is but to make sure it's there. I prefer YouTube because it's the most popular. And YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, they all linked in together. So now you've got an integrated, you do things once, and they all play nice in the sandbox. There's over 300 or so social media sites. I'm sorry to say that not all of them integrate well. So I would suggest that you might want to use the big boys first because, A, that's where your students are. And you have a higher likelihood of connecting with them. And that's really the goal. Is I want to be able to give them information that if they won't read my syllabus, they will watch a video about it. And the end result is they've done something more efficient. Their papers are better. They're, they're, uh, they've integrated some of these things. And that's really what we faculty right, would like, right? Because if we teach them, then we have less time spent on grading it and more time advancing their skills. And that's really the whole goal. So a couple more things in there. Here's what's something for those of you who are experienced facilitators with Blackboard. This is what a video would look like when you integrate it actually in your classroom is if you'll see this, this is how you create announcements in Blackboard. Now, this is a couple different versions ago. Blackboard just update, updated, so this doesn't look exactly how the new Blackboard works. And it literally just updated over the weekend. That's the hardest part. But all I do, there's something called the Mash Up button. And let me type this so you can read it. But in Blackboard, there's one of these things called Mash Up. If there's a way to click the Mash Up button, I go to YouTube, I find this link. Because this little thing here, this is all from YouTube, right? And all I do is click on that link, and that's what it appears in my classroom. So this is wonderful with to keep your students in your classroom. It keeps your administrators within Black, or within your university happy. Because again, I'm not sending them to YouTube. I'm posting the link in my classroom that will play within Blackboard so that they have the ability to uh, have that option to, oh, sorry, my Husky is doing something. Good. Stop playing. So that you have that ability to see this, but it's a mashup function. And it's very cool how the new generations of learning manuals management system, LMS or OLS, online learning systems, depending on your preference, have the ability to integrate with these tools. That you can put YouTube videos. You can put um, uh, things from Facebook on there and links for different things. I teach a marketing class, and it's fantastic because I have the ability to put current marketing strategies. I can show them what I'm doing with the latest book. Again, practitioner, faculty, not um, uh, uh, train the trainer. I'm giving them things that are happening today so that when they graduate, they get their degree, they are prepared, that they can walk into their employer and see what I'm doing and do the exact same things. We're not talking about theoretical. We're talking of using the embracing things that are now going on in corporate America in the business landscape. Social media is part of the marketing landscape. So now I'm using these techniques in my classroom. And whether they know it or not, they're learning how to use them more effectively, enhancing their resume once again on another level. OK, so here are the, again the learning styles. We have the video that appeals to the visual learner, as well as the auditory. And this is where I can copy the links either as a blog post, as a text, as a video, or both. I can embed the code, as I just showed you, with um, Blackboard or eCollege. I can do the same thing. Um, or if you have something, because I also teach for the University of Phoenix, and they have a proprietary online learning system. And their online learning system in there, I just have to put a link. And my students will copy the link, put it in their browser, and still be able to see some of these things. It's just every system's just a little bit different. And then you have options. Again, the goal of options is you do things once. And now when I set up this class, again, instead of hours, I have an entire database that I don't have to reset up every time I set up a new class. And that, to me, was fantastic is that now I have my own external library, I control it, and I have the ability to use the Blackboard system or eCollege or uh, what was it? I know there's WebCT and Moodle and all of these other things in there that once you create it in there, and again, just do one or use mine to start with. And I'm more than happy to share as long as you don't giggle and tell your students that they can suggest more if they like. But it's something that's very, very cool. 
So essentially what I've done to kind of bring this to a close here is I've cloned myself, believe it or not, as I have more than 50, actually it's up to 75 videos with transcripts and more than 50 other uh, videos regarding APA teaching lessons. You can do this with any type of thing. You can actually do kinesthetic and do a how-to if you need to. There are other things out there such as Jing, VoiceThread, um, all types of other techniques, but these are the big ones. And I was always one of those that I had to put my big toe in the water because how can I say this gracefully? I didn't come out of the womb with a smartphone in my hand. Is that gracefully enough that if I need something, I typically hire a 12-year-old as a consultant because they understand a lot of this technology that it will take them five minutes and it will take me five hours. And I know for those of you who are in my generation or older, we didn't, this isn't an automatic. It's something that's going to take some time. And I, on my own dime, have found many business leaders who are teaching this to business folks, and I have just adapted it to the classroom. So, for example, my doc students, I actually have one video for each chapter of the doctoral series, chapter one, two, three, four, and five. Plus, there are things about the grammar gal and APA, and sometimes, as you know, APA can be more of a show and tell, that I have to show them here are the hanging indents and here are the titles in, in italics and all these types of things. So now I have a variety of tools. And once you have your system, and I'm all about systems, Peter Senge was such a, a wonderful uh, inspiration for me that I have a system for everything that I do, which is how this evolved. Every time I'm going to offer a teaching mechanism, I start with the video, I create the transcript, I put, and I have a ding, 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 ding. That's what my class offers. So that you can have this structured, very simple, no more than five steps, and you just do things as you go. And I would recommend that you don't try and solve world hunger here. Try and have the ability to try something. And maybe it's starting with YouTube. Maybe it's starting with the blog. Maybe it's starting with a free blog. Again, as long as it's not commercial, you'll have the ability to do some of these things. But all I can say is learn to fail faster to succeed sooner. That's one of the, the guest speaking opportunities that I do quite a bit around the world. And a lot of it is, is I am not unwilling to fail. Prior to getting my doctorate more than 10 years ago, um, I had the failure was never an option. And now, since then, I've learned a lot where failure is the only option. And you have to be willing to take a risk. And you might feel silly in front of your students. You might take a risk. You might make a social faux pas. You might make a little hiccup. But I don't edit those hiccups out. My students need to know that old doc is willing to try. And she's willing to help them succeed. And it is, you know, as, as, as Nellie's saying, you have to be willing to be vulnerable because they need to know you're authentic. You need to know that I'm real. They need to know that I am an international best-selling author. And you know what? I still put my pants on one leg at a time. And my success came slowly. And it came one step at a time, learning through some of these things that they're very capable of, but you can't overwhelm them. The way I know many of you might be overwhelmed because I know I talk fast, which is also a great thing about a video. Students can do it over and over and over, and you never know. Or they can read a blog many times. Or they can ask for clarity. And when my students have a pattern that comes up, I just make another video. So let me um, pull back now, because I know we only have until 10 o'clock to see if we can um, offer some Q&A here, Nelly. So do you want to monitor this? You want me to hit the chat box? How would you like to handle um, some questions in there? And I'm happy to offer. And if you need anything beyond this, feel free to email me, text me, skywrite. I'm all over the internet, happy to offer anything that's of, of value to help in your teaching. Cheryl, you Let's can see. Uh, question, how to be... Uh, everyone's invited to add their questions to the chat. Cheryl can uh, respond to questions and comments. Uh, I would just uh, like to invite you, Cheryl, to the course where you can um, actually uh, respond to discussion questions throughout the week, like we said, 24-7. It doesn't have to be limited to this particular... Uh, Ah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I am going to be out of town next week at a convention and out of town. One of my very first doctoral students, I graduated my very first seven this year. She's graduating on Sunday, so I'm out of town Wednesday through Sunday next uh, next week. However, I my have computer will travel, email me, text me, and I'm happy to comply. You can also post things in any of my things, and I will uh, make sure that this discussion as well, Nellie. Thank you so very much. Yeah, there's the um, link. Helena, do your stuff. Okay, there's the link, Cheryl. Um, oh, good, good, can... good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this um, on another window right now, and then I will be sure that I'm there. I'll post my stuff in there after the um, uh, today's discussion. I'll make sure that I'm visible there. So uh, there's one question that I saw about do students cooperate. If I understand what the question means, cooperate, meaning do I post it and do they watch it? The answer is yes. 
All of them, no. The challenge becomes is that I know if they are grade conscious, if they are learning conscious, if, if they want to advance, I can tell when they've watched the videos because I can see improvements. <laughs> and I get really annoyed, and as I'm sure many of you do, when I'm in a six-week class and by week four I'm still making the same comments all the time. Well, sometimes in my comments, not only do I offer a comment, I will post the link to a video. Or I will say, here are the links that I posted week one in our announcements in your classroom. Did you watch them? And many of them will sheepishly tell me, no. It's like, well, there's a reason I post them. And your grades are typically hired if you actually use them. And so many students, eventually, when their grades are not what they hope for, and they're looking for a tutor, they will find that tutor through me. Doc in a box is what they call it, which I think is kind of funny. But they will see me as a personal way of having a conversation with them, even though it's not live, to teach them something when it, they have the ability um, to talk. So again, I'm sleeping at 3 in the morning, but my videos teach for me technology that tutors 24-7. And they can teach for you as well, whether you do them yourselves or you use mine. Just give them something that they will see that other professors aren't doing. Because they don't, students are desperate. They just don't want the vanilla, just text in the classroom. They want the cool stuff. So make it a point that every class or every quarter you learn something that's cool to do in your classroom. Whether it's a Vokey, whether it's a video, whether it's something that you would have the ability to just get and get them excited. I get so many no's. Do you view, blog, respond? Um, I get so many no's. Did you view, blog, respond? I'm not sure that I'm following. Um, so, Nelly, no, I was just relating to what you were saying about students. I teach face-to-face. -face ah. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm shocked sometimes. I'm talking about young students, you know, whom you tell, you know, go here, go there, uh, respond here. You know, they, they don't seem to get it unless you're there, no. you know, standing, you know, over their shoulders and you tell them, yes, that, you know, they need the face-to-face uh, -face, um, encouragement and communication. You know, I'm finding it really, really difficult to get face-to-face -face students to um, do things as well as the online, the fully online ones. Well, I think, to be honest, I had been a smart aleck remark years ago with saying, well, gosh, if I could teach a class on Facebook, I'd do it. And I'm considering having something here because but this is the hard part where, you know, administration gets heartburn. It's because they don't understand the goal. And I, if the goal is really teaching, and we can demonstrate assessment through student learning improvement, I would stand on my head and gargle peanut butter for my students if I know it would help. I would skywrite it. So the point is, is in the event that I'm, I may, and this is something that not till after the first of the year, but that I will try having putting my announcements on Twitter. And why? Because Twitter, if you know what it means to tweet, and again, I'm using an awful lot of jargon that I don't want to lose you or overwhelm you, but students have technology in their smartphones. They have Twitter that they will get announcements more than they will look in your classroom. So if I have to tweet to get their attention, maybe I need to learn to tweet as long as I'm not going to give you know the administrators too many heart attacks in there. But my goal is to be able to try, because I have private groups on Facebook. Uh, and you can have a private group. And if they're going to be on Facebook screwing around anyway, I'd rather teach them and have them screw around with me. And I know that sounds funny. But in the event that you have that, there is a way. But that means you as the faculty have to learn. And that is a very, very scary opportunity. Yes, naughty Dr. Cheryl. Absolutely, Bill. But my goal is, is if I get to play, but guess what? If it's fun for me, they know that. They get the excitement. They see the videos. And they know that I'm just not teaching the same class that I've talked for the hundredth time and yawn, yawn. But it's the first time they've seen it. We need to be fresh in our content. And a lot of schools are not quite teaching this. They expect us to do it, but they don't necessarily teach us how. And this is something that, again, out of frustration and trying to respect my administration where they say, well, fine, I'll go out and learn how. And now I'm teaching the how. And some of them are still skeptical. But guess what? I was in a classroom the other day, and they had an a, uh, overhead projector in the classroom. And I just about died. And the whole point is, can you imagine? That tells me that there are faculty not willing to embrace new technology. Students cannot follow us. We have to follow them. And I agree, Nellie, that we can't presume the students understand technology. Sometimes I have to teach it to them. But once I do, and it's not that difficult, they're easier to sometimes embrace it. But I do know that some of the older than I am. 
And I do know, and again, to be respectful, many of us who are of older generations didn't come out of the womb with a smartphone. I still remember the first black and white TV. Thank you very much. That tells you how old I am. But the fact is, is if they're willing to learn and they're willing to learn convenience, if I can get my parents off of the answering machine into a cell phone, they didn't do it for me, they did it for their grandkids. Ah. So the fact is, is when I try to convince, sometimes I have to convince the administrations, like, please have an open mind. Look at the andragogy. Look at the assessment. Look at the fact that the students who use my videos have better writing and I have less to do. And that's the ultimate goal. The question is, how do you get them to actually read what you're offering? Because I guarantee you, they're not reading the syllabus. Probably no more than we did when we were students. But they are watching my videos. So in the event that I can help, please go ahead. I've been doing a lot of guest speaking at many universities. I've been doing a lot of teaching because I know universities expect this, but they don't spend the, all right, assume I know nothing, talk to me, I'm a two-year-old, and do me a step-by-step. -step, and that's really what I can offer. I know I talk fast. But that's because we only had an hour together, and I heard the 10 o'clock buzzer go off, so I know we have to go. But the fact is, it's something that I spent years in training on my own nickel with many professional business coaches. I've just adapted this. And the hardest part is staying current, because I'm already out of date with certain things that just changed on Facebook yesterday. And oh, dear gosh, I have to learn all over again. But that's the fun part. So oh, thank you, Nellie. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, guys. If there's any questions that we have, Nellie says that we have a few more minutes, I'm happy to offer, because a lot of what we're trying to do is really an outcome-based approach is where do we want to be? Well, the end result is how do we prepare our students for to be effective citizens in their new corporate environment? And we need to prepare them for change, because that overhead projector is not going to be in that classroom. They need to know how to embed videos in PowerPoint, and they need to do online, and they need to know how to communicate with students all over the world, because we are no longer a United States-based economy from a workforce. We have global citizens. Our students all, all over the world. Now we have the ability to reach them when time zones are a problem. And again, dock in a box is pretty cool, but Doc, you know, C gets awful um, tired. And now I know why is when I see a big rush of videos that only get posted or my blogs that are posted, I don't have who watched them, but I can tell at the end of the week when I'm grading their papers that, aha, they saw something that's improving their writing. And that, to me, is I want to celebrate and post it on Facebook. It's frustrating when I know someone said that students are lazy. And so I'm trying to fish where they are. And the same reason why in my publishing company that I always didn't understand some of the things that we published. But guess what? We publish more than just books. We publish ebooks. We publish e-chapters. We publish PDFs. We're on Kindle. We're on Nook. Do I understand everything of what I'm saying? Maybe 80%. But I know that my readers are there. And if I want to stay in business, I can do it or my competitor is going to do it. And that's really the bottom line. So when your students go out into the world, did you prepare them well enough for them to get the job or someone else whose faculty did prepare them? And that's really the bottom line. So I hope that you will take some of these things. And again, don't try and solve world hunger. Just make a sandwich. And if you just do an Animoto video for your introduction the next time you start a class, you will see such a difference in your students. I mean, they're dancing. Now they're paying attention. Why? They want to see what else I got in my bag of tricks. And sometimes that can set higher bar standards. But I know that I become far more popular with my students. And that popularity engages that relationship because now they trust me more. And they're like, all right, cool. If you're going to be on Facebook, I'll connect with you on Facebook. And I've turned skepticism into learning. And now I have students that will take repeat classes with me. And they'll follow me on Facebook. And I even get questions from other classes. Well, Doc, see, you got a video on this? And I'm thinking, I see enough of them. I'll make one for them. And it's not that tough. It does take some time, though. But when you see that reward and you see them at graduation, you see that success, it's all worth it. <laughs> so very cool. I hope I've offered some value for you today. And if there's any way that I can help you further, please. Again, I'm out of town most of next week. But once I come back, let me help you help your students and enjoy some of this stuff in there. Try not to get frustrated. It really is fun, believe it or not. So, <laughs> And Nellie, thank you so much for having me. I absolutely love connecting with you guys. I'm just so sorry my video didn't work today. So. I'm sorry, and we're all sorry, because uh, watching you is very, very engaging. And I also dance when I watch you, not just watch your videos. So. Cool. And that's part of the thing is I don't know how many of you have live videos, but I know if you're teaching in an online classroom, there is the ability to have synchronous video time. Think of Skype, that you can have one-on-one -on -one sessions if you can't get them by phone. And believe it or not, for one of the universities I teach for, Embry-Riddle has something called Eagle Vision, that I actually have a live Skype classroom. 
meaning that I have students around the world where I'm sitting at home, they're sitting at home, and we are connected on Skype for four hours. So I am teaching a class from home, but it's live, and it's fabulous. For the first time, I can now connect with them in a synchronous environment in the same time they are. It's some sophisticated technology, I won't lie to you, so it's some sophisticated training, but it's now possible. And so this is really going to change the face of education. Exactly. And don't forget, you've got WizIQ, and it's completely free for educators. Yay! So absolutely. That. Good All plug right, for Nelly you. here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for Cheryl for your enthusiasm and encouragement oh. for educators to log on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Have a good day, everybody. I look forward to seeing you online. Thanks again, Nelly. Have a good one. Bye now.